You just finished your GCSEs. Congratulations, well done. You finished level one of the game. However, most of you might not be aware that you don't have to stay in school. In fact, you don't have to stay in full-time education anymore. Some of your friends are probably out getting a job, getting an apprenticeship, making money. But you, you have chosen to stay in full-time education. You have chosen not only to stay in full-time education, but to take the most challenging course, A-levels. If you don't know, A stands for advanced. And that's what you are about to do. You are about to take on an advanced course for the next 20 months. But for now, I want you to picture this, okay? Picture the people that you look up to in life. Picture the people that inspire you. For example, it could be a famous athlete like Ronaldo or Messi. It could be a businessman that you look up to, let's say Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos. Or it could even be someone from an anime, let's say Goku. Think about Goku, think about these people, these inspiring people, they take over the scene and they make it look effortless. They all understand the seriousness of their position. They all understand how much is relying on them and how much is on the line. Okay, so nothing happens by accident. These people that are pioneers and that are leaders in their industry, they're amazing because they all have a plan, a, a deliberate, deliberate calculated, calculated and, and methodical, methodical game, game plan. plan. So just like that, I want you to take your A-levels seriously. You need to have a game plan. You need to think about, okay, A-levels is a massive challenge. I'm faced with this massive challenge. You can't get full race stars by accident. So you need to think about how am I going to tackle my A-levels so that at the end of it, I'm successful? What's going to happen to you over the next 20 months? What's going to happen to your physical health, your mental health, your communication and interpersonal skills, your mindset and your discipline and your vision for the future? You are about to Now I need you to be very, very self-critical here. Make a list of all the things that you are good at, all your hobbies, all the skills, all things that come to you effortlessly and easily. Just write it all down, write it down, down, down. No one's gonna see this, okay? Then on the other piece of paper, I want you to write down every single habit that you are not happy with. Things that you think you could improve or completely get rid of. Spend as much time on this as you can. Okay, and again, don't worry, no one has to see this. It's just between you and yourself. But until you do this, you can't move on to the next step. Once we've done this, the next thing is to think about what kind of skills would a person like you need to develop? You are a multi-dimensional person. Your character has multiple skills. It's not just one skill. I want you to think long-term, okay? Because I want you to start thinking about developing these skills, not for today or tomorrow, but for five or 10 years in the future. You'll just be an incredible person, okay? Think about all the people online that you see that are just famous on, on social media or people that are just the best at what they do. Those skills took time to develop, okay? And these are things that people your age are not thinking about right now. These are things that people who are probably deep into their career or have just finished university, they're thinking about this stuff at that time, okay? So if you think about this now and you start developing these skills now, imagine by the time people, uh, by the time the rest of the population start thinking about this, you'll already be there. You'll already be years and years ahead of everyone. So first step, sit down, make a list of what you're good at and what you're not good at and just reflect about yourself as an individual. Communication is probably one of the most underdeveloped skills that people have, okay? Think about leaders in general. The reason they're so effective at leading is because they are able to take ideas and communicate it to their team members and get them to join their quest or their mission, okay? And not only that, communication can also help to turn your enemies, not that you have enemies at 16, 17, but it can help to turn your foes into allies. So what is communication? Why is it so important? The first thing is that communication does not start with you speaking, but rather by listening. If you can listen 
and understand what the person is saying, you then have a better opportunity to respond and answer their question. Okay, there's a saying that sometimes people are just making face noises to each other, but they're not communicating. You have to be able to understand what they're saying, process that, and then respond. Okay, so first of all, I want you to practice listening. When someone's talking, sit down and think, what is this person trying to say? What's the underlying message behind their communication? Once you become good at listening, the next thing I want you to do is think before you speak. We all just want to fire away. We, we get trigger happy with talking, right? Oh, someone says something and straight away you want to give them a response. But you have to think deeply and contemplate, maybe not for hours and hours, but don't give a response straight away. Especially, let's say for example, when you go to university, they will ask you some difficult questions. And part of effective communication and part of genuine communication is for you to sit down and think about what they're trying to say, what's the question, and then maybe after one or two seconds or maybe after five seconds, then give your res response. This will make them feel that you actually appreciate their question and you're giving them a genuine answer. This will come to you over time by building it. So some things that I did that helped me to become a better communicator was by teaching others, by mentoring. So for example, when I was in school, I had the opportunity to mentor students that were younger than me. And by doing that, I was able to talk to them and explain stuff to them. And that helped me to express my ideas. Communication is both visual and verbal. So you have to consider what is good body posture? How do I use my hands when I communicate? All these things have to be considered when you're talking to people. Why don't people want to be your friend? It's because maybe you're not good at, you're not good at talking. Maybe you can't hold conversations because you, you haven't practiced speaking. So whenever someone tries to speak to you, you're just bland and boring and have nothing to say back. You have to be able to effectively communicate. So not only are you successful in your life, but also that you can draw people around you and build a strong network. So practice communication. Physical health. It has to be on point. Just like you look after your brain and after your knowledge, your body has to also be nurtured and looked after in the same way. Remember, you're a whole being. You're not just a brain. You're also a body. You have to make sure that both of them are fed and nurtured so they can work together. Now, why is it so important for you to start thinking about your physical health now when you're starting your A-levels? When you have time, aren't you going to be so busy studying that you don't have time to exercise? And that's the biggest mistake people make. In fact, the Parkinson's law says that if you give yourself one task to do, and let's say you wake up and you say, today I'm going to just write one essay. You will spend that whole day writing that one essay. You, time will expand to fit that one essay. But if you wake up and you say to yourself, okay, today I'm going to do three essays, you will give yourself a specific time for each one and it's more likely that you do three in one go. So the point I'm trying to make is this. If you give yourself time for exercise, not only are you going to get the benefit of having exercise, but at the same time, all the other work that you have to do throughout the day, your revision, your eating, your socializing, you will also cram them into a much smaller time and make sure that they're done as well. So not only will it improve your fitness, but it will also improve your overall productivity. So it will help you in terms of your memory, your focus and your mental clarity. Now, another benefit is that your physical health and your mental health are linked together. Okay, we know we live in an era where our mental health is constantly under attack. Whether it's from social media, whether it's from things going on at home, whether it's from any external factors that are surrounding you. By doing exercise, you give yourself an outlet where you can release all that tension that's been building up. And you might realize that actually, this has helped to improve your mental health. Especially for you guys, because you're about to do it at your A-levels, you're going to be experiencing periods of time where, for example, in two, three weeks, you just have to exams and exams and exams, and that can get to you, okay? Can, that stress can, can break some people down. So by having a strong physical foundation, you give yourself that mental edge. The way that you look is one of the first things that people judge about you. 
if you look smart and you look healthy and you look like you have a good discipline in your physical routine, people will have an unconscious bias, a subconscious bias towards favoring you, towards, towards being your friend. Because they'll be like, you know what, this person, they look like they have their life under control. This person looks like they take care of themselves. So they must be hardworking. They must be determined. They must be a person of discipline. So look after your health. People will judge you a lot, especially when you go to university, when you apply for jobs, when you go to interviews, they will make that judgment about you. So the next skill that you need to develop is how to build a team around you. Now, before we build a new team, let's think about your existing team. And that's the people that you live with. Okay, so if some of you could be a family, some of you, you could be living with other people. But what's important is that the team that you have at home need to understand what you're about to do. Because what you're doing is not a joke. You are about to go to the next level. You want to take these A-levels seriously and make sure that you get it right the first time. It probably means that you might not attend some family social events. But it's fine, remind them that you were doing this for yourself and also for them. You want to make them proud as well. And if they're on your team and they're understanding, it will make things much more easier. Perhaps maybe in your room or maybe in your house, you might have a spare room. You could turn that into a study room for one or two years. Whatever you can do to make sure that you have the best advantage at getting the best grades. So once you've sorted out your existing team, the next thing you want to think about is collecting a group of people around you who are like-minded, hardworking, determined and ambitious. So at school, think about who, who are the people that are always trying to be the best and try to collaborate with them, share notes, share ideas and try to always make sure that you, on, you know what's going on and that you're not left behind. But this is a mistake that I don't want you to do. Okay, a lot of people under the guise of revising, they sit in groups for hours and hours in school. And if you ask them what they've done at the end of it, they haven't done much. So if you are going to work in a group, my rule of thumb is this, okay? Only go into a group if there's a clear objective. Now, apart from your friends, you also have to make sure that you're on good terms with all your teachers. The reason you want to be nice to your teachers is because these teachers are going to write your report. They're going to write your personal statement. They're going to advise you about university. And in A-levels, you will have a lot of questions that someone with knowledge needs to answer. So remember, your network is your net worth. If you build a good network, your net worth and your value will also increase. You need to remove time wasters from your life. People will come and go. The people that you knew last year in year 11 are going to be different to the people that you're going to meet this year. And A-levels is very short. After A-levels, you're all going to go to different universities and meet a bunch of new people. So don't be afraid of removing people that don't add value to your life. It might be a bit harsh, but the honest truth is this. No one's coming to save you. You have to save yourself. The truth is planning and being able to plan effectively is one of the most important skills that you need to develop. You see, not many people plan their life. They just go through life like a wind blowing left and right and center, wherever the wind will take them. But you can't do that. You need to be a strong tree rooted firmly in the ground with your beliefs and your ambitions and your goals. And the only way you can do that is by planning every day and reminding of yourself where you're going, or where you're heading and how you're going to get there. But we're talking about long term goals. We're talking about where you're going to be in five, ten years time. We're talking about how your character is going to develop. OK, so for that, you need planning. Think about think about large companies like Apple, Samsung, all these large corporate companies. They sit down multiple times a week or in a month and they they reflect over what's happened over the past month, what good things have happened in that company, what goals have been met, what hasn't been met, what needs to be improved on, where the company's going, what direction. All these things happen because of planning. Imagine they didn't plan. You think they'll get to where they are by accident? Of course not. Treat yourself like those companies. Treat you, whoever you are, that person, that character, like those companies. What have you done this week that was good? 
What can you improve on? What can you perhaps do a bit differently? So learn to plan, learn to plan effectively. It'll help you in the long run. And by the way, there's no formula to the best planning. Okay, no one's got a secret planning method. Everyone can plan in their own way. So I would say for now, literally just get a blank notepad, get a journal. If you like to do on your iPad, get an iPad and just sit down for 10 minutes at the end of the day and just write whatever you want. Whatever comes into your head, just write it. So today I've done this, that was good, this was bad. And you'll see that over time, your planning method actually will evolve. And you'll see that certain things should be tracked certain things are not important to be tracked and that will improve your planning method and it will be tailored specifically for you. Okay guys, so to conclude, you're about to start your A-levels, you wanna be on track to get those A-stars and to get into the university of your dreams. But don't forget, as you're progressing through your A-levels, as you're going through this journey, you want to develop your character as a multi-dimensional person. We're gonna give you our secret tips and tricks on how you can improve yourself throughout your A-levels. Until then, I hope you guys stay well, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.